Hi everyone, my name is Alona Nadler. I'm a product manager in Elastic, focusing on Kibana. Just out of curiosity, how many of you heard, used in the past, Elasticsearch or the Elastic Stack? Can you raise your hand? Okay, that's pretty nice. So what we're going to do today in 15 minutes, which is a short time, but I'm going to touch on a few geospatial capabilities that we developed over the years and how can you use them. Everything that I'm going to show and talk about is free. Um, and to get to know each other better, this is the Elastic Stack, just in high level. I'm going to talk about, whew, that's nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about mainly Kibana and Elasticsearch. On the bottom, we have two great products that helps you ingest your data into Elasticsearch. I'll try not to move. Thanks. Thank you. So just to get started, for those of you who have never heard about it, Elasticsearch is a distributed open source for search and analytics. You can do free text search. You can ask aggregated questions. And we also have fantastic support for GeoSpecial. Um, the reason a lot of people likes us is because we have a simple REST API for everything we do. Uh, we are very developer friendly. Uh, we are distributed, means that you're not strictly bound to small data sets. You can distribute across hundreds or thousands of servers and still get the speed and performance while doing very advanced queries. We support both search, like the one you're used to in Google, uh, but we also support aggregations and geospatial. And I want to show you, I'll start from the basic, I want to show you a few things. So this is how I will um, create my index mapping. So just as an example, if I wanted to ingest a lot of cities into my Elasticsearch, I will create a HTTP call and create the mapping. I, we support geopoints, which means coordinates, and geoshapes, which is an array of coordinates that creates a polygon. In addition, of course, we support, oh, yeah. Okay. In addition, we also support, of course, textual, so I can give the metadata of the city, the city name, where it states, which states it's on, and numerical data. So now that I created the mapping, I can start ingesting documents into my Elasticsearch. So this is, for example, San Diego, and I have the center of the city, and then also the outlier, which is, which is the polygon of the city space, uh, San Diego, the population. And now that I have a bunch of cities in my Elasticsearch, I can start asking queries. So I can start, for example, saying, what falls within this geobound and do a geobound box query? So which cities falls within the specific area where their center is in that area? And I can also do a geoshape query. So I give you an envelope, and I want to know which cities are contained within that envelope. And that creates some really nice searches. But I can even do more than that. So we have a concept of aggregations in Elasticsearch, and as an example, let's say that I have documents, and just as a time, in terms of terminology, everything I said is called document. Documents are records, it can be logs, it can be flight, it can be whatever you want. So let's say that I have documents, and in those documents I have all sorts of values. I can say I want to aggregate them based on the color. And then once I create those small groups, I want to calculate the average. And, and this is how you'll do that directly to Elasticsearch. But the interesting part is that I can create more and more nesting aggregation. So I can say I want to aggregate by colors and then by shape and create those small groups and then create, calculate a metric on top of them. So that's really nice in terms of creating those subgroups sub and then aggregating multiple metrics on top of them. We also have geospatial aggregation. So in the same, similar concept, this is the geotile grid aggregation. So we create a grid uh, out of the entire world or locations, and then based on the coordinate, we know where to map uh, the documents, where the documents fall within the grid. So then when I have the grid and I have the documents based on the coordinates, I can decide to calculate, again, the average of specific metric. Um, what, and this is how it will look like. So similarly, just with a small REST API, I can create very complicated geospatial. Now, if I actually wanted, I can also use the centroid aggregation. 
which then we will put the dot where next to most of the activity is. So it's not necessarily bound to be in the center of the grid cell, it can be next to the activity and then you have more and more precision regarding where the dot falls. We also, so let's say that I have, it can be logs, it can be, um, and we want to create those uh, geospatial data set into my document. Um, what we can do when you ingest documents into Elasticsearch is that we have an ingestion pipeline that say, for example, takes an IP and knows how to enrich that with coordinates. And we can also use ISO codes into it. So now it's not just a document with an IP. I suddenly have coordinates. I can have, it says US or Canada or Mexico. And I've been, I can even go lower than that into states and zip codes. So now I have in my document all those nine things and I can start aggregate on them based similar to what we did just previously. Now, if I want, I, I can do what we call term aggregation and say, what are the top countries people are coming to my website, for example? And that's nice and it will say in text, the US, Canada, Mexico, but it will be more impactful if I can put that on a map and I can start visualizing and exploring that more visually. So what we did is we wanted to take the documents that we had and we, had, we needed to combine those to the political boundaries and administrative boundaries. And what we did is that we have a service, it's called Elastic Map Service. We took uh, wiki data and OSM data and we created those GeoJSON files with all those political and administrative boundaries. We tried to do that for a second level, so if I have countries, I will have also, let's say if I have Canada, I will have provinces in Canada, I will have states, zip codes, and I will have all those uh, geo boundaries hosted in what we call the Elastic Map Service. It's hosted online, you can just do Elastic Map Service and you'll find that with all those GeoJSON uh, boundaries into that. So now we can start doing really nice stuff and actually link my data and merge that into boundaries on a map. And this is actually what I wanted to show you today. So what I'll do, I'm gonna to move to Kibana. And this is the elastic map. So before I start the demo, I will say that all of this has, uh, are stuff that we developed over the years. Uh, about six months ago, we actually released a dedicated map solution within Kibana. Again, it's all free. You can start exploring it today and it allows you to do a lot of nice things, combining the power of search and aggregation doing, using large data sets. So this is Elastic Map. It starts with an empty map, and I can add all sorts of layers on top of it. So I'm not gonna go over all those layers, but I will mainly look at the Elastic Map service boundaries. So let's say, for example, that I have a flight sample data, and I can say I want that to be shown based on color map. map. So I have world countries, and I'll create a boundary for that. I can decide when it's turned off based on the zoom level. So let's say that it's up until just five zoom levels. And now I can join that with my own data. So I have ISO codes in my data of the countries. I'm gonna use my index for that, and I'm gonna merge that with the destination. Great, so this is, now I want the color to be styled based on a value. So I can click here and say that the fill color is based on the number of flights that comes out of this location. So quite easily we can create those nice color plot maps. I can do that based on the number of documents, which in this example it's based on the number of flights, or even do more complicated stuff, which I'll show you next. So we started with this. Now let's add a grid aggregation. And grid aggregation is based on the grid um, which I showed you earlier in terms of logic. And I can show that as a point or even as the grid itself. So let me hide that for a second so it would be nice. So you can see that grid and once, obviously once I zoom in, it becomes more and more the precision is getting higher. And for this example, I'm just gonna use the points just because they display better and let's see what else we can do. So in my data set, I have flights and I have the average delay flight time for a flight and then the average ticket price. So let's see delay versus price. Um, and I would add metrics. So we played with the count 
of the number of flights, but now I want to actually see the average ticket price and the average delay time. And now we start to I'll do something that is a little bit better for the people in the back. And now I can start styling it. So for example, I want the size of um, each dot to be based on the average delay time. So I can just bound that and even play with the ratio here. And I can decide that the color is based on the average ticket price. So now, very quickly, the bigger the dot is and the darker it is, it means that the flight is expensive and it's likely to delay. So just using that out of my sample data and showing that across the world. And when I'll zoom in, of course, it will update the grid and will show me more granularity into that. Perfect. So we did that. It's now easy to show. But what if I want to see the individual document, the individual flights? And I'm going to just use, uh, there is an open sky REST API that just keeps track of live flights. And I'm going to query constantly this API. And this is another benefit for Elasticsearch because we know how to support large data sources. And we know how to do that live streaming. So with that, let's try to do that. So. I'm going to use the document layers that actually plot the individual document. I'm going to use that with the flight tracking. Let's do it on the last 15 minutes. And now I can start seeing airplanes. I can even visually change that to be as an icon. We're using all sorts of open source icons to do that. Um, and I can define what will be shown on the tooltip. So for example, for each flight, I have the altitude. I have where it's coming from. And maybe the, the flight number. So. so now when I hover on specific airplane here, I'll see that this comes from France, the uh, altitude, and then what's the flight number. It will. Now I can style that even more using, let's say that the color is based on the altitude. So geo altitude. And let's move. And I can even stream that. So I'll see how it refresh constantly with the flights coming in. So now I have, I started with sort of like these boundaries of countries and did a grid aggregation based on the average ticket price and the average delay time. And now I can actually see the planes as they are shifting in the air. And of course, if let's move to the US for a second. And I can see if I'm looking at New York, it's quite heavy there. But I can see how the airplanes are kind of moving between. And where there's clustering, it's likely that there is an airport over here. So showing it in a very visual way, let's create that smaller. And bound that also by the geo altitude. So obviously the larger airplanes are the ones that their altitude is slightly higher than the rest. So now I can play with the zoom level. I only want to see that once I'm zoom level six and above. I'm going to show this again. And let's see what we created here. So we started with an empty map. Take the last seven days here. We started with an empty map and created those boundaries based on the number of flights, visualized the average price versus the delay, or it is very, very quickly. We also have a few tile maps that we have uh, in part of the Elastic Map Service, so I can even make it like this dark tile map. Move it to the bottom and see how everything is plotted visually and nicely. And again, if I'll zoom in closer, I'll see the, the, the flight itself and how they um, Now, since we are a search company, we can always do something really nice that says, um, let's look only in flights that are coming from New York or Zurich. And it will immediately refresh everything in the map. And it will immediately refresh everything in the map. Okay, yeah. 
So I can see only the flight that's coming from Zurich, not, not a lot of them, but obviously it's here in Europe, or look for specific uh, air flights by their number. Um, now, now that I have all of that, let me just make that based on the zoom level. I can save it, and since Kibana is actually a, a, a platform for visualization and exploration of data, I'm not only bound to geospatial data. So, confirm, I can move to a dashboard, and we support obviously a lot of different visualizations as part of the dashboard. You can visualize your data whether it's geospatial or not, and the thing is that we are very interactive. Everything I click on a dashboard will immediately filter the rest of the panels, so now I can look at the map that I just created. I can add that to my dashboard and get this nice interactivity with all the rest of the visualization that I have. Just showing everything on a large screen, I can, just by brushing a chart, I can see how everything uh, refreshes quickly. Let's say I wanna look only on specific airlines or only on flights that were delayed. Um, and even create specific boundaries, filters, to show only specific area which I'm interested in. And immediately everything will get uh, refreshed to show only the areas that I plotted on that map. So there's a lot to explore when it comes to uh, the geospatial elements in Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch and Elasticstack is fast. It knows how to handle large data sets uh, we are open source and everything I showed here is free. Uh, we try to do this solution for various types of users, so you don't need to be, uh, for example, like specialized in the geo uh, area. You can start exploring your data on top of maps using our boundaries and using the aggregation that we already support and create those really nice advanced maps that you can explore live coming with streaming data from all over. So thank you very much. If we have any questions, feel free to meet us in the table outside and we'd love to answer. Thanks.